What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology. The Titan's action spawning in the right side of the map in the red color, not spawning his hunt. His name is Chrono. JJ, or should I say Kronos JJ, because he is playing Kronos. Yes, yes. His opponent today in the blue color playing as Ra. His name is Kaluminati. The most Kaluminati of Kaluminatis that there ever was. First game, an absolutely insane Ra mirror here. Both players doing some pretty off-meta strategies. Moving into game number two, we'll see what Kaluminati is going to come up with. But with Chrono JJ winning that first game, he has to move into a separate god. He cannot stick with the uh, cannot stick with the Ra. That's the rules of the tournament. You win a game, you cannot play the same god in the second game. That way, uh, we see a multitude of different gods throughout this tournament. Uh, and especially because the map is mega random, there's no way to really say there's no real strategy in picking your gods. It's just well, I pick a god and I hope that I get a map that the god is good on. Uh, otherwise, you just have to sit there and adapt. Uh, so, we'll see what these players are going to come up with in this game. Uh, I'm excited to see what Chrono JJ's Chronos has got in store for us. He's no Yoshi, so don't expect anything too crazy. He's a very, very aggressive Chronos. Whenever we see Chrono JJ picking this god, he does tend to go for very aggressive rushes, especially against Ra players who are not really known for being so good against the Atlanteans. Ra uh, is one of the weaker gods against the Atlanteans because... He's a little bit slow to get going. Uh, he's pretty defensive and he's very, very... Uh, he, he's just, he, he can just get taken out, or get gold-starved easily, get like not be able to deal with the Atlantean compositions with his normal compositions very easily. He has to go for kind of some weird stuff. Uh, so we'll see what he's going to come up with. We are seeing early Lumber Camp coming down for Cluminati as his houses coming down as well. We haven't seen any monuments just yet. For Illuminati doesn't mean that he's not going to be going for anything interesting here. He, he might just go for uh, one town center fast heroic. He might go try and get a two town center here, even against Kronos. Uh, right now, Chrono JJ has already clicked advanced. This means Kronos Rush, the crush. This 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 strategy was made as at the release of Age of Mythology of the Titans. Players worked out that they could advance at 3.30, time shift the temple forward, utilize the uh, the Valor God power on the oracles to start attacking their opponents before they'd even thought about advancing. And that's what we're seeing happen here. Kaluminati hasn't even got his temple up yet, let alone advance. And while, and while it's not as strong as it once was, just due to players getting a little bit better at defending, it is still a threatening strategy here. As we see the temple coming up over here, the problem for Kronos Rush uh, and for Kronos in general is that his scouting is kind of bad. He can't see into the base of his opponent. And if his opponent gets a back gold mine like Illuminati has, the defense can be relatively simple here for uh, for the Ra player. So we'll see how it's going to go. The units are making their way in here with the help of that Promethean. The town center is here ready to shoot uh, at these units. Dark coming through as well. Makes a lot of sense. Can use that shifting sands to get some stuff done. We see a temple coming up here for Illuminati already as now we see the temple up here getting repaired back up definitely want to get that uh definitely want to get that wadget out here as fast as he possibly can as all the villagers attempting to build this one up that that uh wadget very very important here for Kaluminati. maybe wanting to get some priest out as well here as the uh as the villagers are going to be getting a little bit uh aggressive here onto these onto these uh very very strong promethean and uh, and oracles as the wadget does pop out the priest fair are going to be dealing with those enemy units fairly fast here chronos uh chrono jj's chronos has got himself that counter barracks up here and there is a beautiful attacking uh position here to run straight through here and go after this especially if that uh that 240 seconds onto the deconstruction comes back. You can use it on this watchtower and go after these villagers here. Uh, but Kluminati loses a handful of villagers in that attack. Chrono JJ is on six villagers. Is he still able to be building them? Yes, he is. Getting a second counter barracks up here now. 
Uh, so he's got he's got it all working for him right now. A little bit of idle villager time though, uh, as is a macro not quite on point. Definitely don't want that much gold here. You have to do a little bit of something something if you want to be dealing with what your opponent's got. As we see the uh, time shifting counter barracks coming through and Kaluminati right now being incredibly aggressive trying to get this tower center up. And Chrono JJ is going to be a little bit furious here that he's going to he's going to be allowing this. But the big thing that's going to happen here is you have to accept that this town center is going up and understand that it doesn't really matter because right now Kaluminati has got no food in the bank. He's got no food in his base. Basically, just two uh, pigs left. He's got gathering no gold as well, and this town center is not a threat. Chrono JJ, the biggest mistake Chrono JJ could do right now is pull back and stop making units. If Chrono just continues to make units here and flood this gold mine, flood this hunt, prevent Kaluminati from, uh, from mining and gathering resources, he's going to be in a fantastic position. If Kaluminati is able to just take this food and just live the dream where this is concerned, this is going to be really, really tough for Chrono JJ to continue. So he has to put the pressure on here and see what he can do. As you can see, Shadoof is coming through for Kaluminati. He's still building those villages nicely, and we do see that Chrono has got an inkling here. He sees the gold mine, but he has missed the food. No, he does not miss the food. He is coming in. He is going to put a stop to this immediately as one villager goes down. Two villagers will be going down, and not only... This, and we see the shifting sands back over here, but not only does this put a stop to that hunting situation there, it also puts a stop to some villager production. As we can see, idle town centers right now for Kaluminati is some big amounts of damage here. And that shifting sands would normally kill off somewhere in the vicinity of six Terma gets basically zero kills there as now we're starting to see those farms coming down for Kaluminati. Doesn't have a lot of gold left in the bank. This gold mine here does have 2,000 gold left in it. So lots of room here. Has Chrono JJ going to be um, time shifting his uh, counter barracks elsewhere? And we are seeing this uh, these berries getting gathered from another position that Chrono can push in onto. As we are seeing now, this term are just hanging out all over the map. Villagers moving forward onto the boar over here. Chrono JJ is going to be getting himself hand axe. I'm sure he's got hunting dogs already. And he is ready to move into a very strong next position in this game. Uh, so the question right now is, what should Chrono do? Should he go Heroic Age here? Like just go mass Terma and get to the Heroic Age? Should he try and get a second town center here and try and compete with the Ra's second town center? As we are seeing this villager searching around for his own second town center. Hasn't found it just yet. Uh, uh, there would be one potentially over here. Yes, there is. And that's where that citizen is going to be finding it. Or And there will be one over on this side as well. As the rain does get dropped down, there are only five farms on this position. All the farms in the main base is smart for Kaluminati to do that here. As Chrono does move in, tries to pick off the, the priest over there as the Prometheans are getting... Uh, their best damage done, preventing at least five farms from gathering during this uh, during this rain. Nice micro from Kaluminati though, keeping his uh, keeping his priest alive to deal with these Prometheans, which are very very strong, uh, very very good at tanking damage here off the town center. Is Kaluminati doing a nice job of refocusing onto those Terma, but Chrono pulling back nicely here himself. As these villagers still trying to get as much gathering done as they possibly can. Very low HP. A couple of these villagers uh, are at this point here. As we see a couple more getting taken down as Chrono getting himself his second town center now. Lots of resources in the bank. Lots of options for Chrono's strategy. What I would love to see actually is this second town center going up and armory getting dropped and everyone onto food getting to the heroic cage through Rhea here with some uh, some of those brutally strong, uh, what are they called? They're not they're not scarabs, behemoths. Get two behemoths out to take this town center down. It'd be absolutely brutal. But more Prometheans coming in onto this position to keep preventing this uh, this gathering of the farms here. One thing that you you should kind of be aware of against Atlantean with Ra is how weak putting farms onto your exposed town center is. You can just put the farms in your home town center and just build more granaries out here and just accept that you have to have that walking time. We are seeing what looks to be Chrono JJ playing a little bit more standard 
uh, a little bit more standard Orano's theory here, getting three town centers in a response to the two town centers of the Egyptian. The problem, the thing is with Orano's, the reason this strategy is more standard and not exactly as good with Kronos is you have access to Heke uh, and you don't have access to Rhea. And, and Rhea is a really, really big, uh, really, really big heroic age timing civilization uh, uh, minor god as opposed to the hyperion or the thea which while hyperion is a decent it's not a it's not it's more of a uh, a map control thing rather than a building killing thing so hyperion would be to, to prevent gold mines from being gathered for example whereas rhea would be to take town centers down uh for example so the reason why this isn't as good with chronos is you have access to a heroic age timing god, but more importantly, you don't have access to the mythic age timing god, which is Hecate. You have Helios, you have uh, Atlas, and Atlas is decent, but it's not the same as as an early Hecate, which you can get from the third town center. So we'll see what Chrono is going to get with that. Obviously, going for Helios or something like that is not going to be a bad idea uh, at all because he can use the vortex and and do some nice damage there. But right now, Kaluminati slowly getting those resources up, now able to advance to the heroic age. He's got himself three hundred. 50 gold left on this medium gold mine. We don't see any attempt at spotting this gold mine out over here for Chrono JJ, which might be a little bit of a problem here for him. But guess what? I doubt Kaluminati knows there's a gold mine there. He's Ra, hasn't done much scouting. I can't remember where he scouted in the early game with his Pharaoh. We do see this priest over here getting sniped down consistently here by Chrono JJ segment coming through. Chrono's still pumping those... Uh, those counter barracks units out as we do see the villagers popping out here attempting to shank down some of those terma nice usage of the priest there able to pick off one of those prometheans allowing the promo uh promethean offsprings to pop out but that's about it here as chrono pulls back not much more to talk about he's getting himself villagers only from those two town centers needs to start that third town center off to get himself all the way up to 25 citizen as fast as possible he is upgrading watchtowers now though this is interesting because he can actually oh Kaluminati is insane here he's grabbing this town and he's gonna lose a villager or two uh and basically chrono jj can't put a stop to this there's no way for him to put a stop to this he's gonna pick off another villager here nice job uh finding those low hp those low hp villages but in the middle of the map Kaluminati gets this town center but he doesn't have enough resources right now he does he has just enough to throw up a migdol stronghold but the thing is here and we also see a scarab coming through here for uh Kaluminati deciding segment the option uh, but the thing is here we do still have access to deconstruction so this will put some uh a little bit of, it'll slow Kluminati down just a little bit here. But the big thing is that now Chrono JJ has got two gold mines he has to put a stop to here. And he's got to be asking himself the question, why did he go three town centers when he could have been Heroic Age with a behemoth putting a stop to Kaluminati's town center? And we do see the immediate uh, deconstruction on said Migdol stronghold. Kaluminati still gets his gold back for this one. So he's going to be able to throw this Migdol up uh, anyways here. As the Scarab going to be retreating away here. You can see it getting taken out. Does manage to take down a Promethean, but that's about it. But while this is going on, 17 villagers on this gold, and we do indeed see Rhea coming in. And I mean, Kaluminati losing that Scarab might seem like, oh no, but really, it means he doesn't give it to his opponent, which is great. Uh, Rhea is one of the most annoying gods to play against in my experience because it's like your super strong myth units just, uh, well, no, they're mine now. Sorry, they're mine. And while it's not like necessarily ridiculously overpowered or anything like this, it's just like uh, compared to say Locust or or what's not like Flaming Weapons, Frost, these sorts of god powers, it's just annoying. Uh, and yep, that's the thing here. We see some uh, cavalry coming out now for Kaluminati as the wall's coming up over here. Chrono doesn't, well, he should know that there's potentially a gold mine over here, but he hasn't moved over there just yet as the cavalry coming through going to take out some of these, uh, some of these, Terma and Chrono's got a lot of resources in the bank. He's got a lot of wood in the bank. Interested to see what he's going to be going for with said wood. He could shifting, uh, not shifting sands, time shift towers forward, utilize it all, make a whole bunch of farms so there's heaps of food on this map here. And we do see a granary popping up over here. Farms coming down onto this town center as well as Kaluminati has 
somewhat stabilized here. I wouldn't say he's quite managed to find himself a winning position here, but he's definitely not lost, as it seemed like there was a very, very wide open possibility for Chrono to just put the uh, put the the game finish the game off here. Basically, the citizen attempting to get this uh, get this palace up, not going to be able to get through here. Will he get this up in time, though? We are seeing those cavalry trying to put a stop to this one. The, the pal palace is almost up, but one citizen goes down. The second citizen here going to be going down as well. 1,970 HP, though. That's just a couple of bashes away as we see the three behemoths making their way over here. Chrono JJ is up to what Chrono JJ does best here. Going after this one, he's going to pull this town center down nicely here as the units coming over here to uh, put a stop to the raiding party, but the palace does not end up coming up here for Chrono JJ as his uh, as his town center does, but he does take down the town center. So a nice little trade there for Chrono JJ as the Pharaoh coming over here going to be repairing this one back up. We see the Terma coming in here can take down this uh, Pharaoh incredibly fast as they do indeed manage to do that one. The Camel over here need to pull back and try and take down these units here. Chrono JJ getting some incredibly good damage done. He can start the time shift those towers down here. This is one of those things that Chrono JJ, or not necessarily Chrono JJ, but Chronos does, which people don't remember, is that in the middle of the game, when you've got all these resources in the bank, just time shift towers for it. It doesn't cost that much. 100, 100 wood, 50 gold or something like that. And those towers were effectively free and can come down on this position. We are going to be seeing Chrono attempt to put a palace down right on the front here. But now Kaluminati is happily mining gold over here. He's going to move forward and take down these barracks. Chrono JJ is all over the map at this point with those uh, with those units. Well, those buildings, I should say, as he has his gold mine has been spotted over here, but there is a uh, a manor here and units defending said location. So now we see the behemoth with their eyes set on this wall to push through and hit this gold mine and really put it to Kaluminati here with his chronos. As he moves forward, going to take out the priests very, very fast and then make his way in onto this gold mine, I am sure here. Osiris on the way though for Kaluminati. Very, very scary now for Chrono JJ. The mummy, he's got one a uh, uh, he's got one trade out to use, so he shouldn't be too worried about that. But the problem is a hundred percent gonna be that son of Osiris. However, Mail of Oracalcos, this upgrade is actually a lot better than people once thought. This is hack armor for your Arcus. So he's gonna be getting that upgrade. And that's going to help against the Son of Osiris. It does hack damage to him. So we'll see uh, if that's going to be enough here for Chrono JJ as he's trying to get this town center up. He's going to be at four town centers, getting himself uh, some of those uh, destroyers here. He's going to be great as well. He's getting himself irrigation, masons. There is the mythic age for Kaluminati. He's on this gold mine over here. The Pharaoh does get converted there into the son of Osiris. Kaluminati, 124 of 140 population, plenty of resources in the bank. The uh, counter barracks getting taken down. We see the villagers moving forward to put another Migdol stronghold up. The chariot archers coming in onto this position to try and take down some of these citizen here as well. Very, very tough for Krona. He's putting up a market in the corner of the map here. As we do see the behemoth now making their way into the main town center of Kaluminati. Where is that uh, that mummy here at this point? Not doing anything. There's only a handful of priests, so they do next to no damage here. Uh, it'll probably be better off having the, the priest actually empowering the town center here. As fortified town centers coming through Kaluminati, going to be losing his hometown center here as this raiding party gets dealt with. Uh, and we do see over here, the mummy on this position can definitely take that one for himself. But in this position here, Kaluminati does decide the game is lost. Four town centers to one town center. Chrono JJ with an incredible amount of resources in the bank. Plenty of town center population space as well to boot. Going to be hitting the Mythic Age soon, I'm sure. Uh, and a very, very well played game here from Chrono. De de executing a... Fairly decent Chronos Rush here. It's very different to the Chrono Rush of old, which is super all in. You just pump units and try and kill off your opponent. Chrono JJ just says, okay, I'm going to get a little bit of damage done and then pull back and then try and get damage done elsewhere. Allow my opponent to make some mistakes here in this game and take advantage of it. Uh, one thing that Kaluminati probably could have done and actually
actually been in a much better position here. It's definitely not farmed on this second town center. You grab this second town center, you build all those villages, and you send them into your home base to build their farms. And yes, it's a little bit slower, but you can see that the damage available for an Atlantean player is just too much. So you just take that little bit of damage in the walking time. They say damage, but it's not really damage. It's just like, say, like 10 resources less or something for that villager to gather and then you just put it into the hometown center and you just say fine no problems here go to the heroic age in a better position where that's concerned here uh the other thing is i, I would have loved to have seen chrono just go to town center behemoth theory after all that damage she's done he would have taken the town center down and had an easy game here uh but didn't do it Columinati uh, managed to get into a decent position but just not reacting to what chrono does best which is attack you where your weakest he's a master of attacking weak positions in his opponents uh bases and he and he displayed that in this series beautifully two to zero gets the win gets to move on to the next uh the next point of, of the the lower bracket here Congra congratulations to chrono jj thanks to Columinati for playing if you guys enjoyed this game please consider hitting the follow on the twitch if you're on the youtubes hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next game